Michigan is a land of contrast. Massive industry and wilderness. Water and land. Urban and rural. Boom and bust. It takes vision to see past our differences and recognize the bonds that connect us all. Our environment, our culture, our shared history and future. This is the legacy of William and Helen Milliken and two lives lived where upper meets lower, city meets forest, and land meets water. Governor Milliken is certainly one of this world's most decent human beings. Uh, Governor Milliken is a person who is an absolute statesman. He is also a man who an enormous vision, and he does it characteristically in the most soft-spoken, easy-tempered manner. He's truly uh, a model uh, for public life. I've always admired him, and it goes back to the days when I was in high school. The first campaign I ever worked on was Governor Milliken's re-election campaign back in those days. And it was something special. Um, when you looked at it, he stood for integrity. Helen is a figure of enormous dignity. I've always admired the way she has handled so many facets of her life. She is a very thoughtful and dignified woman. Um, you don't need to hold public office to be a role model for others, and she's a great role model to look at to represent the best of Michigan. She's very competitive. I've played tennis with her. And I remember some, some national conference when you, there was a national political writer, and they were slamming the ball at each other, and uh, she is a, a, a real fighter. She has a tremendous gift for connecting with people and being passionate selectively about the causes uh, in which she so firmly believes. Born and raised near the shores of Grand Traverse Bay, William Milliken left Traverse City in 1940 to attend college at Yale. But with the outbreak of World War II, he signed up for service in the Army Air Corps. By the end of the war, he had flown 50 missions as a waste gunner on a B-24, earning numerous honors, including a Purple Heart. Before Milliken went overseas, he met Helen Wallbank during his military training in her home state of Colorado. Their courtship grew from letters exchanged throughout the war. They were married in October of 1945. Well, Governor Milliken and Mrs. Milliken, I think, shaped each other as their life progressed. Uh, they had a, uh, a, a huge impact on one another, whether it was with regard to a public policy matter or whether it was uh, the respect for the environment and, and love of cultural contributions that people have made over time. One of the most distinctive things about uh, both of my parents is that what you see is what you get. They have always enjoyed the ability to help others and to protect our environment and in my father's case make good public policy decisions. After several years running his family's department store business, Milliken began his political career in the state senate. After four years in the state senate, he was elected as lieutenant governor, which led to the governorship in 1969. He went on to become Michigan's longest serving governor. There are those who divide people and there are those who unite people. And Governor and Mrs. Milliken are among the uniters. They built bridges that needed to be built, built between black and white, between city and suburb, between east and west between the Upper Peninsula and the Lower Peninsula. They built those human bridges that, uh, that enabled the right kind of public policy to be adopted. When Governor Milliken became governor, he put a great emphasis on urban Michigan. He's a small town guy from a conservative area, but his instincts were to put a heavy emphasis on the cities. And one thing that really came across when I was campaigning in Detroit 
um, after all these years of Governor Milken's service, how much he's finally remembered by the citizens of the city of Detroit because he was a, a governor that really stood up for the city of Detroit and he had a partnership with Coleman Young back in those difficult days um, to look out for the city and to help the state together. At the time that Milliken took office, environmental issues were quickly becoming a crisis for Michigan and the entire country. During his service as governor, Milliken became a leader among governors in restoring and protecting the natural environment. Growing up on the, on the shores of the Great Lakes, he uh, absolutely had an appreciation of the important role that the environment and that water and that landscapes played in the lives of Michigan and in shaping the character of what is all of Michigan. So he instinctively knew growing up here that, uh, that this was a place where those things mattered and needed to matter not only to today, but would matter even more tomorrow. At the time he took office, and we were literally shoveling dead alewives off the beaches of Lake Michigan and Lake Huron in front end loaders. Lake Erie had been pronounced dead by Time Magazine. Um, that was the start of the environmental era in many respects, and understanding that we were truly at risk, and our Great Lakes were threatened. And he helped make the point of saying, we have to turn that around, and he led the charge on making that happen. So he was a leader in, uh, in, in, in building a legacy, an environmental legacy in the state that is frankly unparalleled across the country. Michigan was the, the leader in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the world, frankly, in adopting the kinds of laws that led to cleanups of, of our environmental problems. His environmental record would include promotion of the bottles and cans legislation, which had enormous impact in helping reduce litter along the roadsides. Well, we now have one of the world-class fisheries in virtually all our lakes. Uh, we don't have uh, the, the same problems that were evident early in the 1970s. We've built a legacy of protecting wetlands, a legacy of, 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 of public transit, a legacy of uh, laws and regulations that protect the environment, not just for today, but for our children and for theirs. And I think that's the important legacy that both he and Mrs. Milliken really, really built for the state. And he led the charge of stepping up to say, let's make Michigan a better place. And we're benefiting from that today. If nature is God's handiwork, then certainly culture is man's handiwork. And there is nothing about Bill and Helen Milliken that are more powerful an influence upon me than their love of arts and culture that have been handed down from one generation to the other. Near, near Traverse City is the Interlochen School for the Arts, and uh, he had a background with Dr. Maddie, the founder of, the, of Interlochen, and uh, it's just something that he felt was uh, an important part of, of life. While both were enthusiastic supporters of the arts, Helen Milliken soon took a leading role in advocating for arts and culture in the state and established an artistic legacy that continues to this day. Helen Milliken's support of arts and culture goes to the beginning of both the Michigan Council for the Arts and Art Train. And um, when Art Train was founded in 1971, the Michigan Council for the Arts was a brand new organization. And she literally stepped right in and became involved, understanding the importance of arts and culture in the communities across the, the state. Governor and Mrs. Milliken have a view, I think, that what civilization has done tempers everything we do and think about the world around us. We can't be a healthy society without a healthy and vibrant arts community that protects the legacies we've inherited, but also advances the creativity of younger artists who will make the same contributions that a hundred years from now we will love and respect. And we will be able to view in museums or read as plays or sing as songs or perform as symphonies. The love of arts is something inherent in Governor and Mrs. Milliken, and it showed through all the policies and all the turmoil of the 1970s and early 1980s. He protected arts and culture at every step of the game. Helen's influence extended beyond the arts. 
she became active in preserving the beauty of Michigan's landscape and fought for tougher restrictions on highway billboards. She also became a leading voice in the nation for the women's rights movement and was a strong advocate for the Equal Rights Amendment. Well, Governor Milliken and Mrs. Milliken are certainly products of Michigan, and their love of the state uh, can't be transferred to any place else in the world. I think that uh, the very fact that they chose to retire in Michigan and continue to uh, hold down uh, their home and household in Michigan is testament to the fact that uh, they weren't going to flee to Florida uh, in their golden years and escape the beauty of Michigan. He had opportunities, I know he had opportunities to move to Washington, didn't want to take them. Governor Milliken had no aspirations to higher office. There was a point later in his life when he was asked to run for the United States Senate and he had no interest in that at all. Was and remains committed to Michigan, still lives here in this state and I, he loves this state. He is a, a representation of the very best, I think, in, in what public policy is all about and the best word I can use to describe him is as a statesman. Governor Milliken's greatest achievements lay in his management of the times, which any governor has to attend to. It is critically important to attend to current moods and current issues. But there was also a reverence for the past and, and, a, and a deep appreciation of that which he and his wife and all the, the people of Michigan have inherited, which are extraordinary lakes and rivers and streams, extraordinary farmland and woods, uh, extraordinary cities built by men and women uh, over the period of 200 years. And what he looked at through the prism of the past was how do I protect and advance the future for the cities, for the farmlands, for the lakes, and for the people. And that was a brilliant kind of all-encompassing view of how the world should look at its past, present, and future. The issues of my lifetime, the environment, uh, civil rights, uh, those issues were the issues that, uh, that he helped shape, that he helped resolve to make Michigan a better place for, for our children and theirs. Uh, it is, it's, it's written at all the national parks about uh, Mr. Mather, who was one of the early founders of the park system, that the end will never come to the good that he did. And I would say about Governor and Mrs. Milliken that the end will never come for the good that you have done.